Hi, Dave Cherry, the code is coining. In part two of this video, we're going to take a deeper look at the UI. We're going to add a few extra menu types, add multi-language support, and then finally take a look at the CLI. We can see on the file menu a few options to load projects that are uh, existing. So the easiest one to start with is to load an example. You can just select an example and load it up. Also, it supports loading from recents and from sketches. So let's open the simplest one and let's try dragging and dropping. So we can drag any item to another location by picking it up and moving it to the new location. And as you can see, if you drop in the bottom half of an item, it goes underneath it, basically. If it's a submenu item, it goes to the bottom of the submenu. If we want to drag something before an item, we just move it before like that. And to move it after, we just select it and move it afterwards as such. You can also undo and redo. So we can see here that we can use Control Z to undo what we've done. And sometimes dependent on the operation, you can redo it using Control Y. From the menu item menu, we can see that we can quickly add and remove from the keyboard, and we can also focus the menu tree and the editor as well. So we can see here that if we are in the menu tree and we press escape, we go back to the editor and we see our tree. So that's a quick way to navigate around menu items without using the mouse. We can also bring up the preview window as we saw before, this will be discussed fully, but this is effectively a lightweight embed control built into the application that just works enough to let us um, work with the, uh, see what it would look like in a simulator. You can also search for menu items either by their ID or by some of the text. Double clicking selects it and opens the editor at the same time. You can also, if you're in any doubt as to how, how a menu item works, click on its documentation and you can see there's a full description of how the menu item is intended to work, about how in code it will be generated, what the um, designer view looks like and what all the fields mean, and examples of how to use it. And even examples of how to use it from the CLI and creating them yourself directly in code. We'll now move on to copy and paste. If we come back to here, we can copy an item and we can paste it back in. You can see it gets a new ID. Also worth noting that that item is nothing more than text when it's pasted. It's very similar in format to the EMF file and just the difference is it starts with TC menu copy so that we can identify it to be able to paste it back. So you could even save this and paste it back later. The IDs will be replaced, so the IDs don't matter. If the IDs clash, they get replaced during the paste operation. And that concludes this part. So we're now going to go ahead and create some more menu items using additional TC menu types. We'll start with a text menu item. So this represents text. And um, what we're going to do here is create one with plain text that's 10 characters long, and that will represent the username. Next, we're going to create a passcode. The passcode will only accept hexadecimal characters. Now that's custom and we'll have to write that ourselves. So we click edit next to the callback function and we choose implementation of a render function. We call it hex choice only. We'll come to this later in code generation because it will generate code for us on this. So after this, we're going to create a scroll choice. This represents the authority. So a scroll choice is like an EEPROM, but it has more options around where you store the items. In this case, we're going to pick a fixed array in RAM. That's just one of the options. You can read about the rest in the help. So the maximum width we're setting to 10. So every item will be 10 long. 
and um, we're creating four items initially and we have to give it because we're creating it in RAM we have to give it a RAM variable the RGB item just purely represents a color and we're going to um, just uh, set that without an alpha lastly we we come on to the list the list um, again some new options have been added for lists in version 4 we can now create lists that have some items set up front, either a flash array or a, a RAM list. We're going to have a flash array here and we're going to give it some just default values to get us started. So you can see we're, we're filling those in now. And then lastly, we're going to create a action item, which will just get triggered. It will trigger the callback whenever the button is pressed, basically. So given the amount of changes we've just made, I've just built the code and uploaded it to the device after doing a code generation run. We can see here that it's added a few things to the, um, to the file, to the inner file. The first thing it added is the authority strings for the scroll choice item. And we can see here that it, um, it has uh, generated it as a fixed length array. I always tend to add this above it just so I can see where each item ends, including its null terminator. But that's up to you if you like that or not. It's not uh, by any means enforced. And then it adds two more items. It adds the hex callback that we created so we can override the behavior of a text field and only accept hex. By default, it doesn't do anything and it also added the reset access that we added the action item. So now we're going to implement the hex characters only callback. Now you can see there's a link here. I strongly recommend that you read thoroughly this page before you try and implement one of those callbacks. This is a very advanced feature of TC menu and requires thorough understanding. We're going to skim over some of this now and we're going to basically implement the feature with um, a quick description of each field. So in order to do this, the, the first thing that we need to do is to set the range. So every time a one of the parts of the text field becomes editable, the range has to be given to the back to the control so it knows how many how 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 many items the encoder can turn through basically so in this case it can go through 15 different values and then you've got to give it the part and the part must be given to it in a suitable way for a rotary encoder or something similar to a rotary encoder. So the part will always be a value from zero to 15. Now for this to work, we just need to uh, cast the menu item into a text item. So we do that at the top, which allows us to access the text item specific um, fields. Then we have to implement set value. So when the encoder sets the value we have to set it back onto the text field so we have to set it back as a character value so the encoder will give us something between 0 and 15 but we need to set that back as text then the other case if you have a keyboard is that you need to set the text value back as well now that's when a keyboard sets it so in this case the only thing we need to do is make sure the value is valid and set it Now, because this is actually um, declaring a variable in a case statement, we just need to put it in braces so that it will build. And that's it. We've effectively now implemented a special editor that will only allow hex fields instead of allowing any text. You can see how you could probably apply this to many different cases. After building the adjustments that we just made, you can see the application now running on the Raspberry Pi. And you can see I'm editing the special hex field. You can see me rotate through the 
authority values, edit the LED, check the list, To configure or enable multi-language support, you go to code and you uh, bring up the locale editor. Here you can choose the locales that you want to work with. I've picked uh, the default and French. Within TC menu, there are two ways that a field can work. It can either be not localized, which means that it will be the same no matter what locale is selected or it can be localized which it is now so we'll leave this particular one as not localized so it shows up the same on every platform and what we will do we will make this one localized so we'll tick this button and we will switch to French so we tick this button not localized so that it becomes localized and let's find a French translation for this in my case I'm going to use Google Translate and we're going to give it a French translation and we can see straight away in the menu tree that that is now in French we'll also do the passcode And now we've, and authority, let's do that one as well. Now, don't forget that we almost made a mistake there. And we um, changed it to, um, we, we changed it before we ticked the not localized box. So we'll have to do that one again. That is an important step. We'll look to fix this small bug in a patch release so that um, it automatically unticks not localized if you actually edit something when the locale is not the default because obviously in that case, it should always turn off the not localized uh, button. Here we go, so we'll just do one more. We'll do authority. Untick the not localized button. There we go. So we've got three. They're all set as not localized now. They're all set as localized. So we can save that. And that's that's it. We've effectively localized three settings. And you can see as we switch between the languages, they change in the menu. At this point, I'm going to um, introduce a new possibility. You can see here that there's now a lot of files in the main directory where your source is. Now, if you're using platform IO, or do we know this doesn't work, you can change to use a separate folder for the generated source. I repeat, this does not work in Arduino. And it will ask you before doing it if you because you have to manually move the source code there yourself. So this is a bit of an advanced feature if you do it after the project has been created. But we'll say yes to that. And what we'll do, we'll now delete the files that we want TC menu to regenerate. So we know the plugin isn't our code. We know these language files are not our code. And we know these menu files are not our code. So we can remove all of these. And we can then run the code generator again and it will generate uh, the, into the generated directory instead. Now this is an advanced option. Make sure you back up your project before deleting any files, obviously. And let's run the code generator again. So now I've run code generator again and we can see that it has generated all the files into the generated directory and um, we can still see the resource bundles here 
But we can see that our main directory where we keep the source is now much tidier because all the noise has been put in the in the generated folder. So the way that it works, whenever you want to include the locale files, never include a locale one of these locale files directory. Always include the lang select because that determines which of the locales is enabled. And the way that we enable a locale is to enable TC locale underscore and then the locale that you want as a build flag. So let's copy this one and let's say we want the French locale to be built. So then we go to the platform io.ini file and in here we add a build flag and in Arduino you would do the same thing. You would add a build flag for the void that you wanted to target. Many users prefer to use the command line for some operations. Um, TT Menu has full command line support and going forwards it will probably get better. But right now it's very usable and we'll give a quick demonstration for those who wish to use the command line instead or alongside the IDE. We see most users using it alongside and not instead of. As you can see, we're going to list the platform so that we can create a new project. To create a project, you just give it the platform and the name that you wish to use. Once the platform and the project is created, we go ahead and add items to it. You can see we're just taking a quick look at the contents of the EMF file before we start. So now let's go ahead and create uh, items into that project. We're going to create a boolean and an analog item. So you can see it's quite straightforward to initially create them. It leaves the main settings for you to set. You'd have to either load it into the GUI or edit it in your favorite editor. It's effectively a JSON file. And there is a JSON schema in the application directory that you can use to make um, it a bit easier to edit. So you can see now we're verifying the contents of uh, EEPROM and then we ran the generator and you can see the code has generated um, and you could now upload that to uh, a board via Arduino. Thanks for watching and again please consider sponsoring us using the links on our GitHub page. Creating these videos and um, keeping the project running costs money and time. In part 3 we'll continue the trail and get our app closer to uh, completion.